Our last edition of the show, Frontier Opening Bell. Welcome to the program. I'm Temple Ashaju. Luke Ofojobe from Vetiva Capital Management in Nigeria is joining us. Good morning, Luke. Good morning, Bosin Amofaye, Executive Editor here at Frontier Africa Reports. Gentlemen, let's finish off this week with the last edition of the show. And we start with the markets where Nigerian exchange was down negative yesterday, 0.08%. The BRVM exchange in Cote d'Ivoire was positive by 21 basis points. Egyptian exchange in Cairo, Egypt was down 0.90% and in Nairobi Securities Exchange was positive by 48 basis points. Joanna's Book Stock Exchange sank by 2.34% yesterday uh, before the last trading day of the week. Let's look at the East African markets. Kenya, France's 16 billion shillings deal delays rail projects. Kenya reviewing uh, loan contracts ahead of Libor scrapping. Shelter Africa gets 1 billion shillings from Kenya as new capital uh, subs. Socialist GDP is expected to grow by 7.7% in 2021, says the IMF as tourism returns to that space. PKF PCC sell class 2 issues fresh 1,370 bonds at uh, 100 euros each. Boson, help us to understand these headlines before we move to the uh, next stage. Yeah, I'll just uh, t thank you so much, uh, Temple. Thank you, everyone. I think uh, the whole libel story was, you know, Temple already, the London Interbank offer it, that's libel, it's been scrapped, it's been replaced with another one. Uh, it all started around the whole Brexit thing and all of that. So the libel being scrapped, which has been in the works for the last two, three years, Kenya is now reviewing its loan contracts, externally speaking, ahead of the scrapping of LIBOR. What that means is that how much, for example, will Kenya be paying on his uh, contract obligations, on the repayment of loans and all of that? That is what the Kenyan uh, Ministry of Finance or the Treasury is currently working on. And I expect Nigeria to also do the same because LIBOR is a major benchmark. If you, well, everyone who's the Eurobond, both commercial and sovereign, uh, has a LIBOR tied to it. So you need to know at what rate, uh, plus, minus, whatever, like a London Interbank offer it, are you doing all of that? So that's what Kenya was doing. In terms of the uh, delay in, in rail projects, Kenya is waiting on France. I think this will be part of the discussion next week at the, uh, the G20 meeting. Let's hope how this will come out, if the Kenyan authorities will be able to further engage France. But again, France is holding another major event, by the way, that will continue to help African sovereigns have a better relationship post-Brexit with France now positioning itself as a major economy and a partner to deal with a new born Europe with UK out of it. Shelter Africa, Kenya just raised uh, its uh, shareholding by subscribing to additional 1 billion shillings there. Everyone is trying to put in there. The more you put in, the more you get. We'll look at this Shelter Africa story one of these days, Temple, and see how effective uh, really has this agency been in housing provision across the continent as that big, uh, uh, like a DFI, a funding window for housing uh, provision on the continent. Our uh, Seychelles Islands GDP, according to the IMF, is expected to grow 7.7% this year. That's quite huge. That's coming next to some of the big names that we've seen so far. But 7.7, that is way out of this world. Thank you so much, Temple. Thank you very much, Bosin, for your analysis of these headlines. Let's travel to West Africa and Nigerian markets. FIRS, and that's the Federal Inland Revenue Service, saying to banks, freeze multi-choice accounts over $4.4 billion tax audit. Multi-choice is replying the Nigerian government, and that will be the FIRS agency, saying FIRS tax issues on unfounded allegations. PENCOM, the House of Representatives in Nigeria, to hold retreats today and tomorrow, and that's July the 9th to 10th in Lagos. Ghana looks to double tax revenue to 28% of their gross domestic products. And Ghana's Apps and Mobile raises $1 million via OSIS Africa Venture Capital Fund. In Cote d'Ivoire, Uniwax SA is to pay the total net dividend of 373.5 million sefer francs. I'll start with you, uh, Luke, on these allegations and tantrums between FIRS and multi-choice. That will be DSTV or Super Sports in Nigeria. Let's hear your thoughts on that. Um, good morning, Temple, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me today. I mean, speaking on this, um, as of now, we are yet to you know get more details on what's really going on between both parties. 
um, what you just know currently is that um, FRS at the moment is carrying out an uh, is carrying out a tax audit on multi chores in Nigeria over allegations that um, some tax expenses we are not paid in previous years. I mean, we are still watching how the story is developing, um, but for now, um, we can't really say anything material as regards what to expect. But what I can just say is this. I mean, if the company at the end of the day is found wanting, I mean, it's going to be more like um, um, more like wanting to others really to actually you know, comply with the tax regulations here in Nigeria and also to ensure that their tax remittances are paid um, on time, really. Um, because, I mean, we've had issues about this um, quite a number of times. And more recently, we saw the one as regards, you know, the repatriation uh, of um, dividends um, from MTN to South Africa um, via um, il um, via means that we are not approved by the CBN as at that time. I mean, and given the stance that the CBN took on the company, we saw how the company was able to, you know, turn things around and follow due process. I mean, so if things, um, something like this is also going to unfold as regards FRS and uh, multi-choice, it's going to be more like a warning to other multinationals to actually comply with the tax regulations we have here in Nigeria. All right, thank you very much, uh, Luke. Uh, Boston, let's hear your thoughts on this particular brewing issue. Uh, is there like a a problem with the transfer pricing um, uh, a pro program in Nigeria and South Africa specifically? Because if we flash back at something uh, a few years ago, MCN had an issue with the Nigerian government and now it is DSTV or multi-choice specifically. Give us a sense of what's going on if you know. Uh, at Temple, I think, like Luke said, we, we're trying to get, we, we, we ought to get a whole lot more from the authorities. But uh, if, if you know, it's the same parent company that owns both MTN and MultiChoice. So keep that in mind. They're owned by the same parent company. Now, that is one. Two, uh, this uh, issue relating to MultiChoice Nigeria and MultiChoice Africa, they're, they're the two institutions that uh, the, the tax audits that the FRS want to conduct is there. This, according to media reports from some news agencies out of South Africa. They've sent letters trying to engage multi-choice. The company was not forthcoming. So now the you know, tax authorities in Nigeria are saying, uh, 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 telling the banks to close down the, the books, as it were, the account so that they can do a tax audit. The headline figure is $4.4 billion. That's quite huge for me. And if you look by some of the news get online that the, the, the company, the paid uh, TV provider, had never had not paid the VAT, uh, which which is a value added tax in Nigeria for for many for as many years as possible. Now, that is where we are right now. But if you take it back a little bit, Tempo, the issue which was also in the news is around the level of subscription that multi choice has in Nigeria, and the regulators want to know the exact number. Now, this is very important, Tempo. If you allow me with Luke to go back a little bit, multi choice when it was. Uh, well, when it was uh, Mnet Nigeria, uh, it was listed in November 1999 on the Nigerian Stock Exchange back then in November. It was a dual listing for both Mnet, which now, uh, which is now DSTV, Mnet and Supersport. So it was a combined listing way back in 1999, about 22 years ago or so on the Nigerian Exchange. And I remember very well that day, uh, Lazarus Zim was the managing director of uh, Mnet Nigeria, or the, was, was the managing director, he's in Zimbabwe, and he came to the floor of the stock exchange, it was a grand occasion. And I, as a young journalist back there, was happy that at least we have this listing from South Africa, the first of its kind on our own market. Then immediately after the listing came a bit of the issue around subscription level in Nigeria, knowing that Nigeria was the major market. Then I think they did about two annual general meetings, once in South Africa, one in Nigeria. Then the shareholders started asking questions about the level of uh, 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 Mnet, uh, uh, which is now DSTV or multi choice in Nigeria, their level of subscription and all of that. And that got a little bit off. If you go online, you get some of this news, a uh, uh, back, uh, back story or to the current situation, maybe. Then after about three years or so, Mod MTA, M, sorry, M, Mnet and, uh, and Supersport elected to delist from the Nigerian Stock Exchange, which is now Nigerian Exchange uh, uh, PLC. And that's the end of it. So after just about less than five years or thereabout, they exited Nigeria as a listed company. 
and became a private company and they continue operating as multi-choice uh, Nigeria and of course multi-choice Africa. Which is, so there's a whole lot of story there. If you try to think back towards some of this issue, the Nigerian shareholders or the Nigerian market had always wanted a full disclosure from multi-choice about the level of a subscription in Nigeria. Tax is also on the back of that subscription because Temple, if I don't have a very fair idea of how many uh, subscribers you have, if you run a banking system, you should be able to tell the Central Bank of Nigeria how many accounts you have. Domiciliary account, uh, a current account, savings account. You cannot run a bank in Nigeria, Temple, without, in any, in any jurisdiction, without telling the authorities how many customers you have. A lot depends on it. You cannot run in any country. You cannot run a market firm. If you run a brokerage firm or a securities firm, you must be able to tell the SEC how many clients are in your account, your client's account. These data are very, very important. A lot depends on it, Temple, and that is what I, I think. We'll, let's leave it there for now until we get more uh, information out. All right. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for your analysis on this uh, particular developing um, a story. We do hope that perhaps by way of press statements or press briefing, media briefing or something, we'll be able to hear from both parties uh, in the near future. South African markets now, where South African mines fatalities rising, uh, hit 32 year to date, and that will be like the first quarter of this year versus 24 in the first three months of 2020, or first half year, first half of 2020, I beg your pardon. Process prices, new 10-year uh, tranche US dollar bond, uh, eight-year and 12-year euro bonds also in the works. DP World offers 12.8 billion rands for South Africa. Africa's Imperial Logistics, Rand Water issues 1.7 billion rand green bonds. Caledonia Mining looks to uh, Victoria Falls exchange listing before year end. And in Namibia, export earnings plunge by 51% in the month of May 2021. I'll start with you, Bosin, and see perhaps we can get uh, some comments or additions from Luke. I'll speak br uh, uh, briefly to the mines fatalities, which is news that is getting everybody concerned. The level, the number of fatalities that happen in the mines. So these are not fatalities relating to COVID-19 in South Africa. So we need to uh, distinguish that because the number of accidents, and that is how the story uh, went, is uh, beginning to increase and it's getting industry uh, experts and others concerned about why are we having increasing fatalities or deaths from miners in South Africa, 24 in the first six months of last year, 32 year to date. So there are a lot of concerns out there. And the unions are also getting uh, a lot more, more concerned. If I tie that to the California, Caledonia Mining, which is a foreign company, getting listed on the VF uh, uh, EX, which is the new Victoria Force uh, Stock Exchange before the year, and they've got a financial advisor. They are very enthused about getting listed on this new uh, exchange. And it's going to be the first foreign international company or miner to be listed on the new exchange which was uh, floated just a couple of months ago. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bosin. Uh, Luke, any comments, uh, perhaps on the on the mining segments? Uh, I understand that injury was also way more than 1,000 in terms of uh, injuries in, the, in that sector as well. And this is a serious concern for investors. How do we bring, deal with that? Um, so speaking on the mines, I mean, um, there have always been concerns about, you know, um, negligence on the part of um, miners in developing economies, like they actually don't pay adequate attention to um, the health and safety of, of their workers, really. I mean, there was even a documentary I was watching that was like a couple of days ago on a particular mine. I can't really remember the country right now. I think it was in Chile or so. And you could tell, like, um, looking at how um, they actually, you know, install most of their equipment. You could tell that they were not paying adequate attention to the safety of their workers. And that has been the case, I mean, across all developing and emerging markets, really. And that's why we continue to see, you know, fatalities like this, you know, a mine collapsing and all that. Um, so it's really up to the governments right now to come up with, you know, um, street regulations, because first and foremost, we are humans before anything. We need to ensure that lives are actually safe anytime they are carrying out their um, daily activities. So it's really up to the government to enforce, you know, strict regulations as regards, you know, the operations of 
minds on all that. So if that happens and 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 if any company is you know is found wanting, then you know you can take punitive measures. I mean, it could be in terms of fining and all that, just to ensure that you know going forward they will comply with more um safety regulations so i think that's what we can do to actually um erase or to some extent significantly reduce um the incidence of um mind collapse in in a number of developing countries Hmm. okay thank you very much a whole lot of behavioral uh, uh, changes and also very very needed in that in that uh, uh in that area and of course technology uh okay so let's move on to the northern african markets uh looking at the egyptian exchange now uh, local investors uh, record 85.09 percent in times in terms of sales arab investors 6.5 percent in terms of buy side and foreigners have 8.76 percent in terms of uh, the sell side of uh, securities and that's exchange as well uh, egypt's inflation hit 5.3 percent in june as uh, against 4.9 percent in the month of may morocco has got sothema hiking its capital by adding reserves in the tunisian stock exchange or securities exchange Assad wants capital hike by adding reserves and of course bonuses atijari leasing to implement liquidity contract by july the 12th and that is next week monday uh as always bosin let's hear your thoughts first well i'll leave the inflation story to to luke who considers a lot of macros into his uh, to into what goes you. into the equities market uh but you have what Assad is doing is to uh, wants to increase his uh, capital level as a listed company or the Tunisian boss. And the whole idea is that they want to add reserves, then give a free bonus, what they call bonus shares or rights issue, then uh, then that will uh, raise the, the company's capital. is an application or process that's been put forward to the uh, Tunisian boss. Then at Jerry Leasing, who is looking at a uh, liquidity contract July the 12th, that's going to be on Monday. Well, as soon as this is done, uh, we will let you know. Atijari Listen is part of the bigger Atijari, Atijari Wafa Bank and all of that. So it's a quite a very extensive financial services provider in Morocco and quite a number of uh, 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 other countries within the North African market. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bosun. Oh, well, uh, Luke, your final comments and you have inflation before you there. Um, so with regard to inflation rates in Egypt, I mean, um, rising to 5.3% in June, um, as opposed to 4.9% in the month of May. I think that shouldn't be surprising, given the trend we are seeing in oil prices. I mean, Brent currently is around um, $73 per barrel, you know, rising from about you know 60 um, from the month of March thereabouts. Um, so that has actually been impacting general price levels in a number of economies, not just Egypt. So inflation right now is has become worrisome for a number of countries, uh, both developing and advanced countries, really, even in the US, you know, there are concerns around rising inflation as well. Um, so we think um, this rising um, oil prices will continue to impact, you know, general price levels in Egypt. So it's going to fit across different segments in the economy, um, the food segment, manufacturing segment, and a couple of other segments, because, I mean, a number of these um, sectors actually rely heavily on the use of Use for their operations. So as oil price continues to continues to rise, we are going to see you know that upward pressure on inflation in, in Egypt and in a, and a number of other countries basically. Thank you very much, Luke, for those additions and analysis there. I appreciate them. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for all that you've uh, given us on the show this morning. Luke Ofojebe from Vetiva Capital Management in Lagos, Nigeria. Boston Amorfaye, our executive editor here at Frontier Africa Reports. Thank you so much for your insights. And this has been our last edition of the show, Frontier Opening Bell, for this week. I'm Temple Ashaju. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time, next week. Bye for now.